Okay, um, thank you very much for coming. Um, uh, this is just a presentation about uh, using XMPB to connect uh, Internet of Things. Um, just kind of a word about TIGSAY, who we are. Uh, we began as an open source XMPB server in 2004 from one person project. Uh, we're now six people. Our flagship product is the TIGSAY XMPB server. Uh, it is open source and platform independent. It runs off of Java. Uh, and we specialized in custom application and modification of XMPP servers for specific applications. And we just released version 7.1 just a couple of days ago, so we're kind of fresh off of that uh, and onto some, some new stuff. Um, so what is XMPP? Uh, it stands for Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. Uh, most of that's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll kind of skip the next couple of ones here uh, to kind of go uh, on to the next thing. Uh, XMPP takes place, of course, in a uh, single stream of data, so it goes back and forth until you no longer need to communicate with the server and the stream uh, ends. Um, as you can see here, uh, it is all based in an XML markup, um, so everything has its own uh, child elements, uh, so forth and uh, from there. Um, communication is broken into three different types of standards. They're short contained XML uh, messages uh, sent through the server to uh, either a component or another user. Um, and they come in three types, presence, IQ, and message. Um, and the addressing standard uh, is known as the Jabber ID or JID and uh, is, can either be broken up into a bare JID, kind of like an email here, or a full JID, which has a resource. The resource can be used, say, if you have a tablet, a mobile phone, and a desktop computer, they can all have the same logon, but they all have different resources, so you can address them specifically. Um, just a little bit more, the basic structure of a stanza will have a type, usually a from or a to, um, and related child elements. So uh, moving on to presence types, uh, you have, um, uh, excuse me, stanza types, you have presence. Um, this can indicate a user status, whether they're away, they're uh, away, unavailable, or available for chat. Um, they can be used for triggers for events, so if somebody signs off, hey, some other stuff happens um, uh, inside the server as far as logic is concerned. Um, they can be sent by servers, clients, or components. Um, there are five different show tags. Um, and they can all be extended um, using the status uh, element, and that's kind of a text string that'll explain what's going on. I'll skip priority and see elements. That's just kind of a basic presence stanza that we're looking, that you can see inside an XMPP server. <clears throat> Messages are kind of the bulk of what most chat servers will use, um, and they're designed to carry person-to-person -person text. Um, they can be enriched uh, if needed, and we have five different message types. Um, chat, group chat, headline, uh, and normal, I'm sorry, and finally error. Um, again, I'm kind of moving through this kind of quickly to get to the other real meat of this presentation. Um, they can have some specific elements, but body is really the main one we're concerned about. That's kind of where the, the, um, the meat of messages will work. And we can use things like, for example, we can use HTML to enhance those messages, make them look sort of fancy. Um, info query is the last type of message stanza. Um, and this is kind of how you can get and receive information to the server. Um, you, it, it opens up a method for a, a response and request mechanism. Um, and we have four types of there as well. Set, get, result, and error, which I'm sure you can discern the meanings thereof. Um, this is sort of a pair of examples uh, using uh, Disco Info. Uh, protocol, how can I get information about, for example, information for multi-user chat, um, and this returns some information about uh, which ones are available on that room. Um, and then components um, are items of code that extend these uh, server operations. Um, they will typically have a JIT assigned. Uh, three typical ones you'll see is PubSub, Jingle, or Muck on a server, and PubSub's kind of an important one. Um, as we'll see in a moment. Um, and it's designed to provide a polling service. You can find information there. Things will publish information. You can receive information and receive pushes from those spots. Um, they're organized into nodes. Nodes will be stored relevant information. So in a moment, you'll see uh, kind of how useful nodes can be uh, in this scope. And um, uh, users can subscribe. 
They'll receive notifications about um, new information that's pushed there. And then you can also uh, look up older information if you want to have, say, the last several uh, publishes to that node, you can get historical information from a PubSub node. Uh, kind of moving on to our second topic, Internet of Things, is it really secure? Uh, most consumer devices will have a login page like this, and that's it. And probably about 90% of the ones out there you could log into with admin, admin, oh wow, I have access to this device. Not exactly the most secure platform out there, um, and this is kind of what things look like right now. And this is a bit of an issue because I'm sure many of you are aware of the uh, DYN attack that happened back in October. Um, that's kind of a heat map of what we're looking for, which was primarily done by malicious code on Internet Things devices that were insecure. Uh, small bits of codes were thrown in there, and this is the largest denial of service attack that we've had uh, up to date. These will probably be more frequent if nothing is done to sort of secure that end of things. To that end, why would we want to use XMPP as a solution? Uh, one big one is security. Um, <coughs> The XMPP server can use um, limit uh, to in-network traffic only. So, for example, if you want to just set up a home security system and only have people inside the house control it, that's easily done. Uh, we can filter traffic using the XMPP server logic. Um, and we have some device isolation that allows uh, for devices not to be touched by anybody outside the network or indirectly affected um, uh, uh, by people. Um, and again, authentication can be more than just a simple password uh, using some standard features that XMPP servers come with. Um, there is a bit of an ease of use as well. XMPP servers are already designed to handle that two-way communication that you would expect. So you wouldn't have to worry about, okay, how do I get this device to talk to a phone or another device or a hub? Um, there can be scripts for automatic setup. You turn on uh, another device Inside your network, the hub or the XMPP server says, oh, that's there, already sets it up for use. Um, user can change the uh, name of these uh, pub sub nodes, we'll see in a minute. Um, so users can configure um, how these work. Uh, and again, easy network configuration, XMPP already does NAT translation, so you really don't have to worry about accessing it from outside of the network and creating certain holes if you need. Um, and we can have out-of-the-box secure functionality with an XMPP server. Um, cost is kind of interesting too as well in terms of you're developing some hardware. It's a well-established platform. We've been around for a while as XMPP. It is an open source protocol um, and you can customize to whatever you need, but you don't have to basically spend money to use XMPP as that. Um, particular thing. And again, uh, our solution and other solutions are platform independent, so you don't have to use one specific device or one specific operating environment. Um, so in this case, uh, what we've produced uh, is sort of a, a particular use case, for example, an I Internet of Things thermostat. Uh, really all we're looking for is, okay, we want to get what the temperature is. In this case, it would publish to the PubSub component on the XMPP server, and that alone isolates that device from anybody who wants to put malicious code on there. Uh, any sort of information that's passed to the, th the thermostat has to go through the server and the pub sub component, which means that has to be formatted correctly, otherwise it's going to get rejected almost immediately. Um, and there is another step to go through in terms of if you want to connect to the actual thermostat. Uh, so how can this be done? As again we saw on the diagram, uh, the PubSub node acts as an intermediary. Um, so we can have, and, and what we've designed is that the devices is a root node, and then underneath that root node you have a device name for each device that may be on your network. Um, and then you have a state and a config uh, node. State, obviously, what's the current temperature? Um, and config if you want to send some configuration to it. That will only be allowed through an admin uh, user, uh, but typically somebody who just wants to get in isn't an authorized admin, can only receive uh, the state information from the node. And information is uh, published to their associated node, so um, you can have multiple thermometers. Each node can be renamed on the fly. 
so you can have it upstairs, downstairs, or living room, whatever it might be, uh, just sticking on that. And um, the device itself is responsible for running the application and obtaining configuration from the PubSub node. So it kind of separates the two a little bit. Um, Here's kind of an example that we're using. We're using um, ZEP uh, 323, which is IoT sensor data that is uh, contained within a timestamp. Uh, in this case, we're just uh, showing that, um, in this case, this is a light sensor, and we're used, we just have a value of 37 lumens. Um, and users can connect to that node and just attain current temperature, lumen, whatever they might need. Um, so the configuration nodes are reserved to push information and configuration changes, and they can only allow uh, local traffic or admins, however you might want to set that up, uh, to change your settings depending on how the hub may be configured. Um, and they can only be, again, they can only be uh, limited to um, data forms uh, that we're looking for. So we can't put malicious code in there. It's only going to look for properly formatted stanzas uh, to pass through. Um, these are some uh, XMPP stanzas of how to connect, uh, connect and what we're going to see as far as the transmission uh, just in raw uh, stanza. So in this case, uh, we're just asking for the initial state uh, from the device, um, and max items one is just showing the most recent uh, published one. The sensor will then, uh, well, the sensor will then, re oh, excuse me, the server will then respond with uh, its current read state. Um, in this case, uh, we're getting um, a 23.25 degrees Celsius uh, temperature readout, in, again in that timestamp form, um, and that's pretty easy to scrape in terms of uh, how you know where to pull that information or what you're expecting it's going to show in that format so it'll be nice and simple there um, when a sensor has new data it wants to publish to the PubSub node it'll send another IQ stanza to uh, the PubSub node specifically it will report a new temperature um, and that will be given a item value um, by the server itself so we can each um, publish, uh, excuse me, each new publish will have its own item so you can look up historical value later if you want to do that. Um, in this case, if we want to publish a configuration change, uh, the device will publish its initial settings on startup uh, to the uh, configuration node. This is much longer, um, but this is just a couple of values. Uh, server will respond with an item set. Um, and if you want to change those settings, obviously it would have to be in the same form that, and all the values that we're expecting. Um, we've also uh, created a user interface which uh, completely obscures the XMPP portion. Um, and uh, again, it will just take that information, put it in user reasonable data, which is kind of handy if you want to have something as a complete solution. Um, as far as being able to expand uh, this sort of thing, uh, new devices and values are easily added. Um, we don't have to, you don't have to use any XMPP as far as uh, new drivers and devices. It can all be done uh, in Java. Uh, the framework is similar to previous uh, TigerSafe frameworks. If you've ever worked with one, uh, it'll be pretty easy to uh, pick up and go with. Um, and uh, device types uh, are, are, and sensor data um, are independent, so you can have multiple types with different sensor data if you want. Um, and again, intense knowledge of XMPP is not necessary as coded in Java. Oh, I just went one by one. This is sort of a quick example of our uh, little system working here, um, running a um, just uh, just a, a light sen um, a light setting example. Just have a camera on the side there, uh, just kind of turning lights on and off, so to speak. But we do have a functional example um, running. And um, here we're changing the name of the pub sub node um, from lights dimmer to, I think, just dimmer. Um, and this is done quickly on the fly, and the server just adjusts automatically, which makes that nice and customizable. Um, again, here we can see. Uh, quite a few settings that are available that can be changed uh, using uh, publish uh, 
publishing new configuration settings to the uh, config pub sub node. And again, just to, just to show how quick it is, XMPP is rather instant in terms of uh, changing these settings, so it is something that can work. Um, and the nice part is we do have several ZEPs available on the XMPP um, website, but we've used basically one that's pre-existing and one that already exists. So we, the, the uh, option to, uh, I think, what has happened here? Uh, I think it broke. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Um, hmm. My computer has decided not to display anymore, so we may have to just look at the smaller preview for the moment. So we've had a couple of options as well as terms of solution. Uh, PubSub is one instance that we can fix this Internet of Things solution. Um, another one is being able to send a direct message uh, through an XMPP server to a device. Um, and in fact, we have a um, sort of a live demonstration here. Unfortunately, the people in the back can't see, but we do have a little robot down here that's receiving XMPP commands. Uh, and uh, returning sensor data uh, to the XMPP server to say, hey, I've stopped, I've turned, I've gone left and right. And this bot is actually just receiving uh, messages, uh, message stanzas uh, directly to the device. Uh, and all it's doing is uh, carrying out those commands uh, as asked. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have... I think your presentation's in the background. At the bottom, there's a bar. Oh, is it? Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so um, in this case, we will require some logons to address those things directly. Um, but uh, the nice part is we can do some uh, reduced overhead. Um, and again, the device still requires a properly formatted XML stanza, so we can't really send anything malicious uh, or anything that it's not expecting. Um, in this case, we're just sending stanzas like these, and if, for example, to move forward, the bot will respond, hey, I've moved forward, and it will use chat states to basically say I'm executing a command. Uh, once it's done, the chat state will basically go to um, uh, idle, and then it will send back a message saying that it is done. Um, our framework is open source, and as of this morning, uh, we've opened it up to anybody who wants to jump in and kind of mess with the code. It's available on uh, projects.tigasay.org. Um, and they're separated. We have an IoT home, which we saw earlier in the demo. Um, this turtle bot is, is there. The only requirements we have right now is a device bridge, which we've used Raspberry Pi 3s. Um, and uh, Tigasay server 720 are newer operating on the same network. Um, that's all I have for now. Uh, any questions about this implementation or uh, source code thereof? We have three minutes. A couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Questions. Yeah, just um, just a curiosity, actually. Uh, isn't uh, XML in general a bit a bit verbose, especially for small devices? Or did you? Did you add some, some improvement announcement to, to make these, uh, let's say, verbosity in the terms of messages that are being exchanged less problematic? Um, we haven't really worked on the, the, the verbosity of XML very much, um, but what we've done is essentially we wanted to make a um, representational case. Um, so essentially, this works, here's how it could be done is, is more what we're going towards. In terms of truncating any of that, we haven't done any work there, but I'm sure it could be done. Thank you. Yes, sir. How do you handle authentication? Um, in this case, for authentication for uh, PubSub, we can use anonymous users if we just want to use, if we just want to collect data. Um, for the message bot, well, um, yeah. It can, it can be also done in such a way that um, each device will have uh, embedded its own private uh, JIT and its own private password. 
So every device would have separate password, separate uh, uh, lo um, login, let's say, and it would create a specific account on our server. In, and our server can allow it or not. It's up to us or user uh, on the end to decide if, if you want to decide to decide if this uh, device should be allowed to attach to this server or not. Yes. So when you say our server, do you mean Tiger says server or the users? Server? Generally, it would be any uh, XMPP server, right? Yes, sir. MQTT, MQTT seems to be popular also on IoT devices. So what's the disadvantage that they're uh, against this solution? MQTT is fine in local networks, right? However, when you would like to expose or uh, access if, uh, this network from uh, an internet, then you will need to uh, go through NAT uh, issues and etc. With XMPP, you can connect or export ex a low connection to XMPP server from outside uh, networks. Easier. And it's already done, so it's, this is the advantage of this uh, small, uh, solution. This small turtle was, is connected to our uh, company uh, server. So I have only, it, is, it works as uh, XMPP client, and I have XMPP client on my laptop. Uh, that's all. It's all the time we have. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, Thank you. Thanks, man.